Okay, you guys, so today what we're going to do is we are going to work on our guide for our probability section. Okay, so coming on down and opening up the guide. Oops, sorry. There we go. Uh, we are going to go ahead and walk through how we can use our software to help us out with these probability questions. Uh, we are going to go through some basic probability, we're going to use contingency tables, and we're going to see how both uh, our commander and Excel can be there to help us out. Okay, so for this first one, survey was recently given to five major tech firms to determine employee satisfaction. And then it says answer the following question. Okay, so we've got these questions kind of moving our way down and we need to figure out how to answer them. So let's dive in and do it. So first things first, we're gonna take our data and we have both the tech company that the individual worked for and their satisfaction. And we can just highlight that, copy it, and put it into our, our commander. So I'm just gonna go this way. If you have problems with this, remember you can always paste this data into an Excel file, save the Excel file, and then import via an Excel file. So I'll just click OK. And when I click view my data set, it looks good, tech company and satisfaction. Okay, great. All right, now what we can do, all that for this probability section that we're really interested in is I wanna make a contingency table out of this data. So I'm gonna to go to basic statistics, descriptive statistics, and I'm gonna come all the way over to contingency table, and there's an option here that says two-way table. Now for this one, I'm gonna choose my rows and my columns. So for my rows, I'm gonna choose my tech company, and for my column, I'm gonna choose satisfaction. Now I could swap those, and the only thing that would be different is that my table would be rotated, uh, but I'm gonna choose it this way for right now, and I'll click OK. And here is my table, my contingency table. So it's got good, neutral, poor, and then these tech companies. Okay, so from this point, what I can do is I am going to copy this data. And now I'm gonna open up Excel. And basically from this point, I'm not going to be using uh, R Commander. Basically I was just using R Commander and R Studio to produce my contingency table. Once I've got the table, uh, I'm going to basically be doing all of my math inside of Excel. Okay, so let's open up a new window. Okay, and then let me blow this up a wee bit so that we can actually see what's going on. And in here, I'm going to click on this first cell and I'm just going to select paste. Now, one of the problems with this is how it pastes the data is it kind of just slaps it in in a haphazard way. It doesn't look very good. I'm even going to try to do it a little bit better than this. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go click on paste special. Sometimes if I just paste it as text, that's a little bit better. So I'll click OK. It looks about the same it's not very pretty. What I really want is all these numbers to be in an individual uh, in an individual cell. Okay, so that kind of looked bad. Um, sometimes it can be that I didn't copy it very well, and it looks like I copied it just fine. So we'll just fight with what we have right now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first things first, in this first row where satisfaction is, it's just got a bunch of spaces, so I'm gonna delete them out. Um, that's just kind of a housekeeping, but not like super important. Anyhow, I want to highlight this first column because like all of this data really is in these single cells and I'm trying to get it shoved off into the other parts. All right, so now I'm going to go to data, text to columns, and I'm going to try to work with fixed width and I want to go ahead and click next. All right, so it's trying to make a whole bunch of columns where it thinks that some divisions are supposed to go and notice how it kind of tabs off the one from the good and the two from the neutral. If I double click on that little arrow, I can make it go away. And so now I've got them in the columns that I actually want them in. That actually looks exactly how I want it. And so I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And now I've got my data in individual cells, which is exactly what I want. And I'm just gonna move my satisfaction. If you click on it and if you get to uh, yeah, so I got a little hand. You might have an arrow if you're on a PC. 
but I can just drag it over and now I've got that and if I double click between A and B I can get it to the width. Okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for, is this contingency table. Now from some of the videos, what we also use are um, our marginals. So I'm just gonna put total over here, and I'm gonna put total over here. All right, what I can do from this point is I can say, remember the totals are the marginal, or so the marginals are the totals of in at the bottom, marginal or the totals of the column, and over here they're the totals of the rows. Okay, so we can go ahead and do this really easily. If we type equals and then the word sum. And I'm going to put in a parenthesis, and now I'm just going to highlight the data. So I'm going to click on this first one drag it all the way to the bottom and you kind of pretend that you're playing battleship right so b3 all the way down to b7 for where i pasted it in and then i'm going to click enter and that has totaled up this entire column if you don't believe excel you can double check with your calculator but if you've done this summation and you've gathered the cells then you should be just fine okay now i could do that again i could do the whole like equals sum and then drag this the whole way down but it's actually kind of slow what you can do is we already did it for right here if we drag it over we can just it just basically tells hey excel now sum these five cells directly above me now that i'm dragged over and if i do it again it does it again and i'm going to drag it over one more time and check it out now zero here is it's trying to sum up these marginals and there's nothing there so it's a zero but for these marginals, I'm going to type in equals sum, and I'm going to highlight those guys. Click enter, 54, and I highlight all the way down. And I have a grand total of 500. And so if I summed up these call or these values, it should equal 500. If I sum up instead, these guys it should also equal 500. And if I sum up just the raw data it should equal 500 now occasionally what I see people do is they try to do like a sum of all of this they put a comma in and do all of this and if you do that oopsies uh, yes you wind up getting a thousand and it's because you've double counted the marginals just be sure that you don't double count the marginals just pick one of them to sum up I will sum up the column directly above and I get 500 okay so there are some other things that we can do to help just just visually be able to see what's going on I'm going to go ahead and color my marginals as yellow just so that I can kind of see them that hey these ones are my marginals and that's my ground total and I'll make it orange okay now you don't need to do that but it helps out kind of keep our um, our data separated so that we're not confused by what's actual counts and what are actual summations of the marginals. Okay, so now we can go through and we can start answering our questions. So the first one that we have is we have this probability of Google, Union, Facebook. Okay, if I want to do that, uh, there are a couple ways that we can do this. So remember, this could be the probability. I'm going to do shorthand so that I don't have um, to type so much, but Google plus probability of Facebook minus the probability of Google intersect Facebook. All right, so I could do that. And if that's what I really want to do, uh, that's fine. So I can do probability of Google. All right, so the first thing in here, it's like, okay, where is the probability of Google? Well, I know that Google is this row, and so I know that it's going to be 54 divided by the sample space total, which is 500. Okay, great. Then I can do the probability of Facebook, which is going to be, again, coming all the way across, 125 divided by 500. Great. And then I have Google intersect Facebook. And look at Google and Facebook, they are mutually exclusive. They do not intersect. So we're going to minus zero over our 500. Okay. And I can go ahead and click enter. And there we go. I've got my 
totals. And I've got this union for our first one. All right, next one down. We've got Uber intersect Amazon. Okay, we can do that. Probability of Uber intersect Amazon. Okay, so when we do intersections, a lot of times what I like to do is I actually like to highlight the data. So for Uber, I'm going to highlight across. And I will just color that in as, I don't know, blue or something. And I want to see where it intersects Amazon. So I highlight across here and I'll make that orange or something. Okay, so notice Uber and Amazon. Do they intersect? Do these two colors cross at any point? And the answer is no. So if that is the case, the probability that somebody responded as both being Uber and Amazon is zero. And that's just another case of mutually exclusive. All right, let's do another one. Probability of Lyft intersect poor. Okay. Well, I'm going to remove those colors real quick. No fill. All right, and this one, lift. I'm going to highlight those guys. And once again, color doesn't matter, but I'm going to pick, uh, I don't know, we'll pick blue. All right, blue. And we want to intersect poor. So I'm going to come down here and I will make that one some sort of red. And because I remember how colors combine, we know that they kind of combine if blue and red is purple. Okay, so now I've got lift intersect poor. Well, lift and poor intersect right here at this value 12. So I know that this guy is going to be intersection of this 12 divided by my sample space of 500. And that gives me this like 2.4%. Okay, let's keep on going. We've got some more. We've got next one is the probability of good given Amazon. Okay, so in order to do this one, we know that this is going to be the probability of good intersect Amazon divided by the probability of Amazon. Okay, so we just need some pieces now. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm not going to always use that color trick, um, but you can if you want but good intersect Amazon. So I see Amazon is right here, this line, and good is right here. So good intersect Amazon lands right here, where somebody respond as both good and Amazon. So I've got that this is equal to good divided by, good and Amazon divided by our 500. Notice how I put these in parentheses. Um, because we're doing, we're gonna be dealing with two, we're dividing a fraction by another fraction, parentheses are really important. So I'm going to keep my parentheses right here. So that indicates what I've put in the numerator, good and Amazon. And now I'm going to divide by the, what I'm put next, I'm going to put inside some other parentheses as well. Now I just need the probability of Amazon. So the probability of Amazon, if we come all the way over, is 211 divided by 500. All right, so we've got 200 and, oh, let me not type that in. We'll click on it. 211 divided by our 500. And if I, whoops, sorry, not that. Okay, so I've got my 76 divided by the 500, so that's an inter, good intersect Amazon, divided by the probability of Amazon. And if I hit enter, oops. Well, it is not wanting to do this for me. Give me just a second. Let's delete that out. Let's click right here and hit enter. Huh. Oh, there we go. I do not know why it took so long for it to kind of go over, but there we go. All right, now there's another way to do this. We could just consider this as subsetting. So it says, given that Amazon has occurred, so if I think about that, I could just say, you know what? I am only interested in Amazon stuff happening. Okay. Now, given that Amazon has occurred, what's the probability of having a good response? So once again, I would have good 
is 76 divided by the Amazon total because I know that it's Amazon. Good of Amazon divided by the Amazon total and it's the exact same value. So anyways, there's a couple ways to go about getting these conditionals. Okay, it looks like we've got one more kind of uh, complicated one, but that's okay. We can get it nailed, uh, taken care of. I'm going to just take these and I'm going to, let's put in the values real quick and then I'll just hide those. So we've got 0 0.358, we've got 0 here, we've got poor as being 0 0.024, this guy's zero point. Oh, and you know what? Instead of like typing these in, it's even better if I just copy and paste them. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, on these, you should be reporting out at least to four decimal places. Um, if you report more, that's fine. If you don't report all the way to four, uh, then uh, you're in risk of being having problems with rounding errors. Uh, but if we look at uh, at these guys. Um, these just are what the values are. Um, so rounded to four decimal places, they would just put putting zeros on the end. Okay, so another question. Google Union Neutral, and we want the complement of that. So what's the probability of Google Union Neutral complement? Okay, let's use some coloring here before we do anything crazy. Okay, so Google Union Neutral. Let's just look at that one first. Google, right here, we'll color that as like bluish, and neutral, we'll do that guy. Okay. Okay, now the complement of this is a couple of things. I could either find, so if I want to find this, let's do the probability of Google union neutral. Oh dear, sorry. Neutral complement. One way that we can do this is say that that is equal to one minus the probability of Google union neutral. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that make that a little bit darker so that we see that there's an intersection there. All right, so I'm going to say equals one minus. And now let's put in parentheses this next probability. Okay, so we've got the probability of Google, which is going to be 54 out of 500, plus the probability of neutral, 167 divided by 500, and then we're going to subtract from it the intersection, 24 divided by our 500, and I hit enter, and there's like a 60.6% uh, .6 chance uh, that we, if the, the if we randomly selected a person, that their probability would be um, not being Google or neutral. So this would be Facebook, Amazon, Lyft, and Uber for good and poor. Okay, so we can type that guy in real quick, 0.606, and let's just check so far to see if we have made any mistakes. Okay, and submitting our answers, we see that we are good so far. All right, so we've got a couple of other questions left. Uh, so, first of all, are the good and neutral responses mutually exclusive? All right, so if we look at Google and we look at neutral, are those ones mutually exclusive? And the answer is no. Mutually exclusive events are events that don't intersect or can't happen at the same time. And these ones definitely can. You could work for Google and have a neutral working experience there. So, are these mutually exclusive? exclusive? And the answer is no. All right, so the next question is, are the good and neutral responses independent? Okay, so we know that they're mutually exclusive, but are they independent? And remember, if we go back and we look at the math, remember for independent events, let's just type it out, the probability of A, uh, so independent, let me put out the definition, independent, if and only if, probability of A given B, equals the probability of A. Okay, 
So, oh, hold on. I'm crazy. Good and neutral, not Google and neutral. Aha. Let's go back. I was testing you. Here we go. So, Google, sorry, oh my goodness. Good and neutral, those ones are mutually exclusive. Unlike Google and neutral, those ones cross. Let's actually do our colors, because obviously I can't do this without them. Good, here we go, which is, we'll have it be like orange. Oh dear, that was the text. There we go, good. Neutral, we'll have that be, I don't know, bluish. Okay, do those two intersect? And the answer is no, so those ones are mutually exclusive. Good and neutral are mutually exclusive. All right, next one. Are the good and neutral... Mute, oh good. Are the good and neutral responses independent? Well, we know that these two are mutually exclusive, but are they independent? Going down here and checking this, we'd need to see are these two um, are, are these two independent from one another? Okay, give me just a second, and I'll show you how we can kind of show this. All right, so kind of scrolling down, giving myself a little bit more space. Okay, so if we have good and neutral, we'd have like A, B, we'll have that one be good, good, and having this guy be neutral. Okay, so if we hit equals, um, we know that the probability of good, we can figure that one out. It's just going to be this 169 over the 500. So we know that the probability of good equals 169 divided by 500. All right, so now we need to find the conditional probability. Okay, so if neutral has occurred, what's the probability of being good? Well, we could go through the whole probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B, or we can just talk about it for a second. All right, given that neutral has happened, What's the probability that somebody responded as good? Well, zero, right? Because they don't intersect. So the probability that somebody responds good, given that they responded neutral, is zero. So let's put that up. Probability of good, intersect neutral, equals, oops, sorry, it's a little bit big equals zero. Okay, so do these two equal each other? And the answer is no. So Google are good and neutral are dependent. And typically mutually exclusive events are in fact dependent. There are There is a strange case where if one of the probabilities is zero, that they can be independent. And you can go back and watch some of my other videos for an example on that. But are good and independent responses independent? And the answer is no, they are dependent. All right, so our next one, are Google and good independent? Okay, so I am going to color these guys again. Give me just a second. We'll give that one no color and we'll color this one. I don't know. Sure. Yellow something or blue. Sure. We'll do blue. We'll do the intersection is, I don't know, green. Great. Okay. Are those guys independent? Okay. So, well, we know that independent if and only if probability of Google intersect good is equal to the probability of Google. Okay, so probability, let's start off with probability of Google. We'll start there. So if we start there, let me open this up just a wee bit so we can see the rest of our cells. Probability of Google equals 54 divided by 500. All right, there's a probability of Google. Fantastic. Next one that we want to look at. Probability of Google given good 
And that, just from our mathematics, is equal to the probability of Google intersect good divided by the probability of good. Okay, we can do this. That's going to equal parentheses for the first one. Oops. Here we go. Google intersect good. Well, Google and good intersect right here at 15. So we'll do 15 divided by 500. And we're going to divide by the probability of good. Well, the probability of good is 15. Uh, oh, sorry, is the probability of good is this 169 divided by 500. Okay, so we've got B3. So 15 divided by 500 is the probability of Google intersect good. And then the probability of good is this 169 or this B8 divided by our total. Okay, and we can go ahead and hit enter and we get this 0.887 or if we rounded it if you want to round you can use these kind of buttons up here to take us down and we'll take it down to three decimals all right so we've got some options over here so the probability of Google given good has to be equal to Google so we know that this one's bad because it's got this union weird Probability of Google given good equals good. That one's not right. Probability of Google given good equals Google. That one's a good one. That guy's a good one. And that guy's a good one. So we're on the bottom three. Okay. And if we looked at these, we would make the assertion that these guys are, in fact, dependent. Okay. And so it says independent. And, well, we didn't get any of those guys. And independent independent well those are the right numbers but that one says independent this one is the one that we want google given good we've got that value of 0 0.089 and we've got google at 0 0.108 and therefore those three dots stand for therefore dependent we can click on that guy and when we submit lo and behold we've got all of our answers so this is an example of how we can use our contingency tables to answer uh, a whole bunch of different probability questions and how we can ascertain independence of uh, some events. So anyways, hope that helps you get through your guide. Good luck.